Have a little last scratch and a shake. And off we went to Africa on a more than 6,000 mile journey to be a part of the Mercy Ship's first mission to the Congo. We flew from New York to Frankfurt, Germany, then to Libreville, Gabon, where the plane refueled, and finally to our destination, Point Noir, Congo. Shortly after we arrived, Peter and I were greeted by Mercy Ship founders Don Stevens and his wife Dion. They launched their faith based organization in 1978 to help the forgotten poor. I just wanted to welcome her thank her for coming. I wanted to over the past 35 years, Mercy Ships has visited more than 575 ports in 72 nations, but it's the first time to the Congo, and they'll be there for the next 10 months. Most people there don't have access to basic medical care, and many haven't ever seen a doctor. On board the floating hospital, I met the man who steers the ship, Captain Tim Traithway, and took a tour of the bridge. I also met Buck, the 180-pound training and drill exercise dummy. And I even got a tour of the kitchen from head chef Ken Hatfield from North Carolina. We do all our own baking here. He and his staff serve anywhere from 1,200 to 1,700 meals a day. When I go home, if I've gained any weight, you can, call can it, I call and complain? Well, you can call it Mercy Hips <laughs> instead of Mercy Ships. Okay. <laughs> the entire crew, including the heroic doctors and nurses, are all volunteers nearly half of them from the United States. And you never know who you might meet, including the security team made up of six Gurkhas. Believe me, the ship's in good hands. On patient screening day, more than 7,000 people lined up in hopes of getting care, all waiting patiently to be seen by the volunteers. Ali Chandra is one of the amazing screening nurses. She helps determine whether doctors will be able to treat them. Hello, sweetie. Hi. Bonjour, petit. Comment tu t'appelles? Do you want to come and have your lip fixed? Yeah? Okay. She told me about the joy she feels when she knows she will be sending someone through whom Mercy Ships will be able to help. There's nothing that compares to that. When you see a kid, when you see a patient come up who you know we are going to be able to help. And so being, being the first one and being able to say yes, it's saying yes to, to everything. But perhaps the hardest part of her job is when she has to inform others that there may not be anything Mercy Ships can do for them. Unfortunately, the problem with his feet is, is caused by a problem that, that's in his brain. Yeah? So because of that, it is not something that a surgery will be able to correct. Over the next 10 months, thousands will undergo surgeries to remove life-threatening tumors or have cleft lip repairs, orthopedic corrections and more. One of the most moving things, if you show them very quickly on uh, when they're waking up, show them their face in a mirror, they're, they're just moved that their face that's always caused them shame is now, mm. uh, they can see it's better even with the little bandages on. There are so many angels aboard the Africa Mercy like Chief Medical Officer Dr. Gary Parker, or Surgeon Mark Schrein, or Finance Director John Wall, to name a few. I marveled at how well they all work together and how devoted they are to helping others. A lot of people have asked me what was my deepest impression from the week-long trip in the Congo with Mercy Ships. It was a great reminder that kindness is at the heart of humanity. We could all learn a lot from the people who make Mercy Ships missions possible. Ah, did you get that, Greg? Mission Possible? Mm, that was very clever. Uh, so my husband, Peter McMahon, he filmed all of that. He did great which I think he did a great job. He's amateur. I mean, we just bought a camcorder. It was like 60 minutes. It was. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah, you, said, you said in here that the, the thing that impressed you the most, the thing that struck you about kindness, and I couldn't put it better, uh, but what was the thing that struck you the most about the people who lined up to get this care? Well, a 
uh, Point Noir Congo is is actually um, fairly you know, does fairly well because it's been a port that is um, is ISPS labeled, which means that they you can ship international goods there and they have security, so they they work very hard to keep that um, there. So there's more jobs there than in most of West Africa, but the people that lined, there were seven thousand people that lined up to come through the line. The Mercy ships had been there for three weeks. They'd done some promotion. They do some PR put posters up around. Some of those people there, they have never seen a doctor, and they also just don't have the medical capacity to be able to handle it. One of the doctors that you saw there um, with Dr. Gary Parker is a local doctor. So they, one of the things Mercy Ships is really trying to do is build out that capacity so that a local doctor can come and learn from a surgeon so that they can try to make sure that they get, catch the problem early and just learn the techniques that they've learned on Mercy Ships over 27 years. Dan, is there a place for pe if people want to donate or help out? Yeah, so I, I, I did think that's really important. That I think that's what surprised me about the people who work on the ship. There's 391 people there. They raise all of their own funds. And this is not government money. Um, they get money from churches, their friends. They raise it on their own. And um, if you go to mercyships.org, you can uh, sponsor somebody. Or I just have to tell you that if you do give any money, it is really, really well spent. You know, go ahead. Do what? I just wanted to know if it, there's situations where they can't help the child right there, but maybe the child could be brought to the United States. Do they have a funding well, mechanism for that? Well, not necessarily, but they do have, for example, one of the babies uh, is really underweight, and so they have an infant feeding program. There's also off, off ship an eye and dental program. Uh, place that does, they'll see 50 patients a day in the dental area, and then up with, uh, on the eye thing, especially with uh, cataracts, they can whip people right through there, and everyone's a volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, what do you say you and I put a thousand bucks each in? No, you don't have to do that, but if no, you want to, will. go ahead. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, can I, I was, uh, the week while you were gone, I was just kind of yeah. hanging out in uh, Midtown, and uh, saw somebody familiar. I, I thought I knew this person, so I took a picture of this person, <laughs> this is uh, interesting, um, Took another picture, and then I, if you can close in a little bit, if you just look uh, there, you can see the date of the uh, newspaper, <laughs> August 29th. Yeah. My which God. Was the week that uh, you were in. It was all a ruse. It was. It was all a ruse. Uh, it's amazing. The, the she lengths. was here the whole time? She was here the whole time. <laughs> this never happened. Oh, uh, yes. I, I went, I would, um, I'd go again. What are you doing? Next. I'm just waving my hand. Bob's next. Topic some of us may at the table it's know a little thing. And a mountain man. We get together anytime we can. Oh, Tennessee River.